this video I'm going to show you how you can turn any cell into an interactive button. It uses a little bit of VBA or Visual Basic for Applications code. It's quite straightforward and it's incredibly powerful. This particular example is nothing too revolutionary but I'm hoping that it will demonstrate the techniques which can be incredibly useful for making your reports and your dashboards a little bit more interactive and interesting. Like I say this particular example isn't too earth shattering what it does is if you select any cell it highlights the entire row just making it slightly easier to read across the row so it doesn't matter where I click it's going to take that row and just make it a little bit easier to see the other thing that this example does and this is probably more useful is when you double click a cell it filters the whole table by that value so for example if I go to this cell which is transport in the category column double click it filters everything to just show me the transport items if I double click on BERT it's now just showing me BERT's transport items I clear those filters and show you it doesn't matter what I double click on so I'm going to double click on the green team it's just showing me green team now I double click on weapons it's just showing me weapons this can be really really powerful so how's it done Got another example here at the moment there's nothing on here I can click away double click there's nothing on here it's just the same data but without any of the visual basic behind it so I'm going to go and open up visual basic I go into the developer tab across to visual basic the place I'm going to put this visual basic code is in the sheet that I'm working in so this is quite important I'm working on the example sheet here so I'm going to put this code here in the example and this is going to be um, specific code that looks for a particular event, a, a, a worksheet event. So there's two events that I'm going to be capturing. One is that if I just click somewhere, and the other one is if I double click somewhere. The way to just tell Excel that you want to capture these events is first of all you go up here and you say, look, I'm looking for a worksheet event. And then it has loads of different events here that it, it can capture. You've got double click, right click, all kinds of different events that are going to happen. The one that's chosen for me automatically is this one which is selection change. In other words, if I just click onto another cell, if I change the selection, it's good, that's an event and it's going to basically do whatever's in this code uh, that I'm going to put in here every time that the selection changes. So that's perfect. So just to see how this works, I'm going to put in the most basic macro that I know. So this one, as you can probably work out, even if you've never seen it before, it's just going to put a little message box up there um, that says hello. I'll show you how it works. Any cell that I click on, the selection has changed, and therefore this little message pops up. Doesn't matter which cell I select, there it is. Now if I just left it at this, again, <laughs> that'd get pretty annoying pretty fast. So let's go back and amend this code. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a condition on here. So I'm going to put an if statement. And the if statement is going to say, if the active cell value is not equal to the empty cell, in other words, is not nothing, then give me this message box. And then that's the end of the if statement, which I write. So now this is pretty much the same, except now when I click this, it's going to say hello. If I click somewhere where there's no information, in other words, where it's just a blank cell, it's not going to give me anything. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do, is put in a variable. So if you've never used variables before, then think of a variable as just a, a placeholder. It's, it's something that you're telling Excel is going to eventually contain some information. And you're going to basically tell it what the name of this variable is and what type of information to expect. And the way that we do this is with the word dim. Then the name of the variable, I'm going to call my variable row number. Then I say what type of information am I going to have in there. In this case I'm going to have numbers in my variable. So I say as integer. Integer just means it's going to have numbers in there. So I'm basically saying, I'm going to have this variable, expect this thing to turn up, and it's going to have numbers in it. Then I can say what the variable actually contains. 
good idea to use copy and paste here to make sure you don't make any spelling mistakes. So what I'm saying here is that this variable, which I've called row number, is equal to whichever row I've clicked on. So the active cell row, it's a number. So if I click on anything within row 9, it's going to have 9 in this variable. But what am I going to do with this variable? Well, I'm going to use it in the first instance as part of my message. So this basically just says you've clicked on row and then concatenates that together with a variable called row number. So how does that one work? But you can see here now, I've clicked on row 12, so therefore it tells me I've clicked on row 12. Again, not very useful, but you can see how this is working. Right, now I'm going to do something much more useful. Instead of just giving me a message box, I'm actually going to format that row. So I need to select the whole range. The range is usually written like this. So I don't want the fourth row. I want whichever row I've clicked on. In other words, I want a row number. So I need to use concatenate put this all together looks something like this what am I going to do with this range well I'm going to change the color the way I write this is dot interior dot color and make that equal to I'm going to use the RGB referencing system which basically just means that I need three numbers which correspond to a given color in this case I'm choosing a kind of a yellow color you could obviously choose whatever color you want and just find out what the RGB reference is for that color so now that we've got all of that in there, let's see that one working. Click on a cell, and it makes that whole range from A through to I turn yellow. Now the problem that I've got at the moment is that it seems to work okay, apart from it doesn't remove the formatting of the last row that I clicked on. Let's just go back and amend that so it does. So before this, I'm going to have a slightly different method because I don't want an actual color I want no fill at all and the way that I write that is interior dot color index equals XL none and I've done that for this whole range from a4 through to oops that should be I 5000 so now every time I click something it clears all of the old formatting away and then just puts on a new format now the last problem I've got here is that all seems to work nicely but unfortunately it also works for the title bar, which I don't really want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exclude this title row. First of all, I'm going to name the title row. I'll call it uh, headers. So now that's called headers. Go back to the VBA and I put another if statement in. This if statement is a little bit more complicated. I uh, got this particular bit of code um, from a fantastic website called chamdo.org. If you haven't been there, then you really must go. It's a fantastic website. Um, but what this code here says is look at the intersects of these two ranges yeah the one that's called headers which i just named which is um, the one that has all my tiles in and the active cell if that intersect is nothing in other words if they don't intersect um, then do 
what comes next. So basically what I'm saying is here, if it's anything outside, if, the, if I click on anything outside of the headers area, then go ahead. I need to also end that if statement. And just to make that look a bit tidier, I'd usually indent these if statements just to make them a little bit easier to read. So basically it says, if it's not somewhere in the headers section, and if it's not an empty cell, then do all this color index stuff. And now that works, but not if it's in the headers section. Okay, I use a very similar technique to do my filter by selection. This time, it's not on the selection change event I'm looking for, it's on the before double click event. So if I double click something just before that happens, it's going to do this, whatever's in here. So I'm going to use the same if statements here. So I'll copy and paste those. Save myself putting, typing that in back in. Except I don't want it to do this, I want it to do something else. This time it's going to be doing a filter within here. But it's still useful to not work when it's on the header row and not work when it's in any of the empty cells. So that just still makes sense. This time I've got going to have two variables. One of our variables is the column number that I double click on. I'm going to call it DC column. And that's going to have numbers in it. And the other one is going to be the value of whatever I've double clicked on. And that's going to have text in it. And the way we say that is as string. So the DC column variable to the column number of the active cell the DC value number is equal to the value of the active cell so whatever cell I click on it's going to record the column number within this DC column and it's going to record the value of that cell within this variable called DC value. And that's useful because then I can apply the filter. So the way I write a filter is basically say the filter range and auto filter by this field, column number that I want to filter on. Incidentally, this will only work or will only work without modifications if your um, column starts in column A. So this is one, two, three, four, etc., etc. And then it's going to be the value, which I've called DC value. So if I double clicked on food, in effect, it's going to say auto filter on column four using the value food. Let's see that working. Double click, and that's going to filter this by food. Double click again on red, and now it's just showing the red team and the food. So at the moment, I have to take these filters off manually. But I've also got a little button here, which is ready for another little bit of code that's going to remove those filters. Now, to be honest with you, this is nothing to do with making cells interactive. But just to complete this uh, example, we've got a little macro here. Which basically just says active sheet show all data. Couldn't be more straightforward. So if I've already got some filters applied, it's going to then remove those filters. Right click, assign macro, clear. OK. So now when I double click on something, I can then press this button and it will clear out all the filters. One last thing I'll mention, because it always trips me up, 
if you haven't got any filters applied and then you use show all data it gives you an error message because there aren't any filters applied so just to capture that I use this which um, is basically just a, a get out clause that basically says if there's any problems just ignore what I'm doing so now if you've got a filter applied it works because you haven't got a filter applied it doesn't do anything it just it just doesn't give you that error message so that's it that's how to use any cell as an interactive button I think this is uh, potentially a really really powerful tool like I say uh, to turn any spreadsheet that you've got into something which is much more dynamic interesting and interactive I hope that's uh, been useful Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.